In our last couple of sessions, we took a look at working with the objects docker and working with objects themselves in Corel Photo Paint. And in this session, I want to take a look at applying adjustments and effects to objects in Corel Photo Paint. We'll scroll down here and take a look. I've got a couple of objects here. We'll go ahead and start with the soccer ball. And we'll go ahead and click on Edit Bitmap. And that'll open our soccer ball in Corel Photo Paint. Once that's open, I'll go ahead and maximize that. I'll come over here and look at my objects docker, and I can see this setup as a background, and I want to change that to an object. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply an adjustment to this. And I'll come down here to adjustments, and I'll go to local equalization. And we'll see that we get a very interesting effect or adjustment applied to our raster image or bitmap in Corel Photo Paint. This is an object effect that you're not really going to be able to apply to a vector. It's going to have to be rasterized in order to apply the effect. But you can see we've got a very nice type of grungy distress effect added to the soccer ball. The only problem is I can see that I've got some of the effect going outside of my object around here into the white area, which I would call the background, and I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here, and we're going to take a look at how we can constrain how that adjustment or how effects are applied to our objects in draw. I'm going to want to apply a mask to this. To do that, I'm going to come over here to the rectangle mask tool and come down to the magic wand tool. I've got my tolerance set at 2. I'll go ahead and click on that and I'll apply my mask to the white space outside of my object. But before I do that I want to go ahead and show you something here. I'm going to hit Control Z and I'm going to change my tolerance to 100. I'm going to come here and click. Now you don't see a mask. What's happened here is that we've selected everything because our tolerance was set at 100. And You can see here up in mask that we have a mask that we can remove so we know there's a mask applied. Now, if I go and change my tolerance back to 2 and then come click again, I'm not getting that mask. So I'm going to have to go to Mask, Remove, and then I can come and click here and apply that. Also with my tolerance, you'll notice I'm going to hit Control z here. Go back to the Magic Wand tool and change this to 25, and then click. You'll see that if my tolerance is too high, I select a whole bunch of area I don't want to select. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control z We'll go back to 2. We'll click here on the white and we'll see that we've got this mask and we'll zoom in and see what's happened with our pixels. And we see we've got some data here that we want to add to our mask. So I'm going to go down up here to mask. I'm going to go to mask outline and I'm going to go to expand one pixel and select OK. Now I have masked out my white background, but my real objective is I want to mask the soccer ball. So what I want to do is invert my mask. So I'll simply come up here in the menu to mask and then go to invert. Now I can go to adjust, select local equalization, and apply that adjustment to my image. So now I get a very kind of grungy looking ball. Now I can come over here and change the width and height of this. Right now they're locked, and you can see that with that icon over here. If I left click and slide width, it's also going to affect my height. So if I unlock it, then I can actually change them independently. Left click here. I can also, in this dialog box, come up here and click on these little dots, and now I get a preview in my dialog box as opposed to what I see in Corel. Now you'll notice that because the mask isn't carried into this dialog box, I'm still seeing this effect along the side. And I can also go here and change that to a preview, which is just one window of the effect. Or I can come over here, and where do I want to go ahead and get rid of that? Right there. There we go. And that'll go ahead and reduce that. So I'm not seeing my preview in my actual dialog box. You'll also see over here that you can get to many of the effects and adjustments over here just by following this little arrow that's over here on the right, actually up here in the upper right hand corner. Now I've got this effect applied and what I'm going to do is just distress this up and grunge this up a bit. If I bring this up to height all the way, you can see that the effect changes. If I bring this all the way back down to 11, we get a very different look. The best way to really get comfortable with these effects in CorelDRAW is to spend some time experimenting with them and seeing exactly what type of adjustments and effects they make to your images. Then you'll know which adjustments and effects and filters you want to go to when you want to do something with a raster image. We have within PhotoPaint the power to do tremendous effects and filters and adjustments on raster images that we can then take back into Draw and convert to grayscales or create seamless tiles with them and create distressed, grunge, and artistic looks convert those to monochromes 
and then be able to work with those as spot colors in Corel Draw and create really incredible designs that most people that are using Corel Draw when they look at it, they're going to say, you can't, you couldn't have made that in Draw when actually you did it all in Draw. I'm going to go ahead and select OK here. And I've got this effect applied. Next thing I'm going to go to Effects. These are very different. I'm going to come down here into Artistic Strokes. And I've got a whole bunch of artistic looks that I can add to my design. You can go with wave paper, water marker. Take a look at water marker here. That's kind of like change it to a dabbed design. Now one thing you want to realize when you're working with these effects in photo paint that they really are based on resolution. I'm going to hit cancel here. Then I'm going to go to image and I'm going to come down here to resample and I'm going to see that I've got 107 DPI resolution. Go ahead and go cancel. I'll go back to effects come down here to my art strokes and I'll go to my water marker again and you can see on the preview how big those dabs are. I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to go back to image and I'm going to go to resample. I'm going to change this to 400 dpi and select OK. And now I've got a much higher resolution on my image. I'll go ahead and zoom out. I'll go to effects, come down here to artistic strokes and then I'll go to water marker again take a little bit longer to process but you can see now my dabs are much smaller so you want to be aware of resolution when you're applying effects and filters because they are very closely associated with your resolution if you want bigger paint dabs work with a lower resolution if you want smaller paint dabs work with a higher resolution I'm going to go ahead and select cancel I'm going to go to image resample I think that might be more than what I want so I'm going to go down to 200 dpi Select OK. I've got my mask set up. I've applied my adjustment. And now I'm going to go for an artistic filter. I want to come here to Effects. Come down here to Art Strokes. And then we're coming here to take a look at Watercolor. And now you can see my soccer ball has quite a watercolor look to it. I can change my brightness here. And make an adjustment there. And I think I'll bring this down quite a bit here. Now that I've added this effect of watercolor, I'm looking at, you can see that looks like it really is watercolor or watercolor painted. What I want to do is hit cancel on this and I want to take this object one and select duplicate selected and apply the effect up here on this object one. I'll turn this one off, have this one selected, and then I'm going to go object name already exists. Okay. So object one, object one, I'll change this and I'm going to call this watercolor. and that'll be my watercolor effect. I'm working with objects on top of each other and this one's turned off in the background. I'm going to go to my effects and I'll come here to art strokes and I'll come down to watercolor and select OK and I'll go ahead and apply that because I like the way it was set up and it'll be right back where it was. Now looking at this the way it's set up I can now come up here to my transparency and change my opacity a bit and then turn on the object in the background and see what type of effect I'm getting with the two combined on top of each other. And there I'm getting a very different look to my effect. I can also come up here and do something like subtract or difference or multiply or divide if lighter, if darker and make radical changes here. And I'm going to go ahead there and I'll get this and slide this back up here and see what we've got here. Now we're starting to get a really different look or effect on this soccer ball as you can see here than just working with our watercolor. I might go ahead and change this back to 100 and I'm just experimenting with my effects and my adjustments here. And Here I've got just my watercolor set up and I've got texturizer and you see if I turn this on I get a really different effect. I'll go ahead and take this back to normal and I'll see my normal watercolor. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go to watercolor, right click and select duplicate selected again. Now I've got object two. I've got watercolor on top of watercolor. I can come in here and slide my opacity back and forth normal. But then if I come down into add, subtract, you can see the looks that I get and I can start to create with some of these different transparencies or settings for our object in the objects docker invert which doesn't look very good at all behind screen 
as you can see here overlay soft light hard light color dodge color burn and I actually kinda like that right there I'm gonna go ahead and select this object one on the bottom I'll go ahead down here and delete that I'll select these two objects here and I'll right click and go to combine and select combine objects together then I'm gonna go to mask invert and make sure I've got a transparent background and I don't so go over here to my magic wand tool and I'll hit delete and that'll remove that and then I'll go mask remove and then I'll go ahead and save this back into draw then I can go ahead and open draw back up and I've got that soccer ball that now has a very artistic look to it and you know if you look on the t-shirt designs on the retail shelves you can see this type of look all over the place now that I've got this set up like this, I'm going to go to bitmaps, mode, and I'm going to convert this to a grayscale. And now I've got just a black and white. Now if I want to set this up as a piece of art, I could also now convert it to a monochrome bitmap, and it would have color management properties associated with it. I'll go ahead and do that with my Fashion Factory. I'll go to Fashion Factory 3. I'm going to take this object, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. and we'll convert at a 300 dpi monochrome and we'll let draw process that once that's finished processing I now have a monochrome bitmap that I can use color management with and I could go to my Pantone colors here and give that a black foreground and I'll right click to knock out or make transparent the background color once this is set up I'll go ahead and delete this baseball here. I could do some interesting things with this. I could create a ball with this, just like we did in our other tutorial, and have that be a soccer ball. I'll go to my ellipse here, and I'll hold down Shift and Control, start working from basically what is the center, then come out till I believe I've got that just about set as a perfect ellipse for my soccer ball. We'll bring this right out here to the edge there like that. Then I'll go ahead and resize this here, and there as you can see we've got an outline now on this now once again what I can do with this I'll bring this over here I'll select this right click hold down drag it over my ellipse release and select power clip inside now that's power clip inside I'll come down here and click select power clip object or I can come over here and say fit contents and I go center contents fit contents proportionally fill frame proportionally. I'll go ahead with fill frame proportionally. And you can see what that did. I'm going to go fit contents proportionally right there. Or I can go in here and select my object that's inside of my power clip and resize it a bit and have that be set up just like that. And now I'd have a soccer ball with an outline on it that looks like it's been painted with watercolor and I could fill that vector object with any color that I want and I'd have that monochrome power clipped inside. Or I can go ahead and I'll go here and I'll just select extract contents right here and bring that back out. Now I, what I've got in the background is a frame I want to get rid of that so I'll hold down here and we'll go ahead and actually I'll go ahead and move this. I want to right click on this and ah, I don't have that extracted that's why. Control Z I'm just going to right click here and I want to go ahead and move this. Okay, now I see what's going on here. Right click here, come up to my frame type, and select none. So we just got a basic vector object here. And then we could have our soccer ball on top of that, and that background behind our soccer ball as a fill color. You could also do some, inter also do some interesting things like create the word soccer. and we'll go ahead and resize this make it quite a bit bigger go up here and select a much thicker sports type font I think I'll go with freshman it'll take draw just a minute to process all the fonts I have installed in my computer and come down here to say something like college Cooper I want to go down into the E's and find freshman do I have freshman installed maybe I don't if I did it would be right here so obviously I don't I want to get a sports font go up here and uh, take a look for something kind of athletic We've got ballpark blade 
bullpen. Actually, I'll go ahead with bullpen here. And once I've got this set up as some soccer text, I can go ahead and right click and convert this to curves. I could take my soccer ball here. We'll go ahead and fill this with white. And I'll go to my object properties docker. And we'll give this an outline of let's say 10 milliliters, millimeters. And we'll round our corners and end caps and we'll go with behind fill and scale with image. And then I could do something like take this soccer ball, right click here, release power clip inside. And now that soccer ball is going to be inside my soccer text for a really neat, distressed, grungy soccer type effect. I could also take this now that it's in there, I could come over here and go to edit power clip. That'll take me inside my power clip. And I could do something like create multiple instances of this soccer ball here around inside of the power clip that's going to make a really interesting look for a soccer style design. And I'll go ahead here and I'll right click and just select. There we go. We'll click here and finish editing this level. And now I've got this whole soccer distress grunge fill going on throughout my soccer text, but yet I can work with it as monochrome bitmaps. For example, if I fill this with a say a yellow and I want to go in and change this effect to a red I can click here on select power clips contents which actually just selected all of those monochrome bitmaps inside the power clip right click on a dark red and get an entirely different look or effect so we'll go ahead and wrap here with the application of adjustments and effects in Corel Photo Paint and we'll continue in our next session